Bonjour à tous et à toutes et bienvenue à, ce, à, ce, à cette vidéo, à ce live. Euh, je suis très content d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui et j'espère que ce, ce petit live est, est utile pour vous. I hope that you enjoy this, that you find it useful, because we're going to be doing a little bit of learning together today. Now, all being well, we should be broadcasting on uh, our Coffee Break French Facebook page, our Coffee Break Languages YouTube channel and our Coffee Break French YouTube channel. So fingers crossed <laughs> we are broadcasting live to all of these sources. But let me know where you're watching. Um, if you post a comment, we'll be able to put some comments on the screen. As I said today, we're talking about, uh, we're, we're going to be learning some French together and I hope that you enjoy what we're going to do. We're going to be looking at the indirect object pronouns lui and leur. Two little words that can sometimes be a little bit difficult to use, but we're going to be learning about that today. And this is all to do with, it's all in connection with our masterclass, which is our six month course, which is just about to start. We are about to launch the next group of masterclass and that's going to start uh, next Tuesday, uh, next Monday, yeah, next Monday, the 2nd of October. Um, and we are hopefully going to welcome a brand new cohort of learners. We already have learners signing up to be part of the Masterclass class of October 2023. Now, let me double check that everything is working according to plan. I'm just making sure I've got everything set up here correctly. Um, hopefully we are all up and running. It looks like it, yeah. As I say, post in the chat, let me know where you're watching from because it's always good to know that someone's watching when we're doing a live broadcast like this. And of course, if you're joining us for the replay, I know that many of you, um, for many of you, you might be in the middle of the night uh, in, in Australia or New Zealand or wherever, and indeed it's fairly early in the day um, over on West Coast America. So wherever you're joining us from, we hope that you find this useful. And if you're watching uh, the replay, then we hope that that's useful to you too. Let me see if we can bring up, yes, we've got my slides here. So this is all working as it should do. We are talking today, as I said, about pronouns. Now, as we go through this, I'm going to be checking in with you, making sure that everything makes sense. And if you do have any questions, then please do post them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer the questions. But as I said, we're looking at what is a pronoun? What is a pronoun? Well, let me see if we can work through this. A pronoun, in a grammatical sense, is a word that stands for the noun. The pro part basically means it's standing for the noun. And if you think of a pronoun like, for example, she. She is standing for a name. We could talk about uh, Angélique. Okay, I don't know why I chose Angélique there, but Angélique is the name. And if we wanted to refer to Angélique, we could say she. So that is a pronoun referring to Angélique. And it's standing for Angélique. If we wanted to say Angélique lives in Nice, uh, Angélique is uh, 32 years old, Angélique is uh, a doctor. And if we kept saying Angélique, it gets a bit boring. So it's easier if we then follow on from Angélique and talk about she. And we replace the, the, the noun Angélique with a pronoun, she. But pronouns can have lots of different types of, there are lots of different types of pronouns. So we have, for example, subject pronouns like she. We have direct object pronouns. In English, these would be things like it or her or me and so on. Indirect object pronouns involve a, a, a direction in a sense. So they are like to me or in some cases for her and so on. There are reflexive pronouns in French too, and indeed in English. We have myself, like I, I wash myself, je me lave in French. We have possessive pronouns, like uh, this phone is mine. You can't see it, there's my phone. Um, this phone is mine, so mine there would be a possessive pronoun. And we also have disjunctive pronouns. In fact, there are lots more different types of pronouns. Um, I'm not going to go into them all, because today we're focusing on indirect object pronouns because I'd like to talk a little about indirect object pronouns and help you understand exactly what an indirect object pronoun is, how it works, what it does, and of course, how it works in French. So let's take a look at this English sentence. Laura reads the letter to David. Okay, so obviously this is in English. We're focusing on English first and then seeing if we can extrapolate from the English how the same phrase would work in French. So we've got Laura, 
that's she, that's our first person that we're going to replace with a pronoun, reads the letter. Um, so we'll just go back there. So if we wanted to replace Laura, then we could replace Laura with she. So another option for the sentence would be she reads the letter to David. She standing for Laura. So Laura reads the letter to David. She reads the letter to David. So she there is our subject pronoun. Okay, now what about the letter? The letter is our object. Laura reads the letter to David. And because in English we would refer to the letter as an inanimate object, we would refer to it as it. So Laura reads it to David. If we want to replace the letter, then we replace it with it. Laura reads it to David. Okay, now what about to David? So to David is to him. And that's an indirect object there we've got. Laura reads the letter to David. If we want to replace to David, we replace it with to him. Laura reads the letter to him. So in actual fact, we have three different types of pronouns going on here. We've got she, the subject pronoun, it, the direct object pronoun, and to him, the indirect object pronoun. And in actual fact, we could replace all of them. And we could say she reads it to him. Laura reads the letter to David. She reads it to him. Now, the crucial thing here is that ultimately we only really start to use the pronouns if we've already talked about Laura and about the letter and about David. If we know that this is a situation where we've got Laura and we've got the letter and we've got David, then we can refer to she because we know we're talking about Laura. We can refer to it because we know we're talking about the letter. And we can refer to him because we know we're talking about David. So far, so good. Let me tell, let, let, let me ask you, I'd love to know if this all makes sense so far. And what I'd like you to do to let me know whether it makes sense so far is simply put a number in the comments. So comment number one, if you're confused about this. Comment number two, if some bits make sense. And comment number three, if everything is good so far. I'm not getting any comments through here, so maybe the team can just confirm for me um, if we are actually getting some comments. Maybe no, no, no one's commenting today in that case. <laughs> That's fine. We'll keep going. But it would be good if we could see some comments. I've just realised I've not opened up the... Let me just do something here. Um, da -da -da -da. Ah, okay, I'm seeing comments now. <laughs> okay, lots of threes, that's great. I'm also seeing lots of you saying hello, so that's great. Thank you for seeing where you're, where you're watching from. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got all that now. Brilliant, so good to know that it's all making sense so far. Um, okay, let's move on. We're going to move to French because we've got Laura reads the letter to David. Let's look at this. Laura lit la lettre à David. So the same parts as we have in English, uh, as, as we have in English, yeah. So Laura lit la lettre à David. Laura is the subject. Lit the verb. La lettre is the object. And then à David is the indirect object. And this is where we're coming up with this idea of an indirect object pronoun. Let's see what we can do about replacing these different words in French. If we start with à David, we're going to replace that with lui. Now, I've, I've lifted it up here and I'll, I'll explain why I've lifted it up because we're going to put it in a different place in the sentence. We've got lui as in to him, it means to David. And we actually need to put it before the verb in French. So what happens is we get Laura lui lit la lettre. Quite tricky to say that. Laura lui lit la lettre. Let's try saying it all together. No matter where you are, I want you to just read this out with me. Laura lui lit la lettre. Voilà. Laura lui lit la lettre. So literally, Laura to him reads the letter. Okay. Let's try something else. We're going to try another example here. J'ai raconté une histoire à Louise. So, I told a story to Louise. Now, one thing that's tricky is that in English, we sometimes say that in a different order. We sometimes say, 
I told Louise a story. And this is where we need to be ultra careful because Louise is still our indirect object object there. Louise, even if it comes, I told Louise a story. J'ai raconté à Louise une histoire. Sounds odd like that in French, but j'ai raconté une histoire à Louise. So let's see what we can change here with our à Louise. We're going to change that because that's the part that's the indirect object. And this time we're not saying to him, we're actually saying to her. But there's good news because to her in French is also lui. So again, the lui is going to come before our verb. And in this case, it's the conjugated verb, the auxiliary verb, because we're using a perfect tense. And we say, je lui ai raconté une histoire. I to her this time, have told a story. Je lui ai raconté une histoire. Très bien. Okay. Now it's your turn. Je donne le livre à Jean-Luc. I give the book to Jean-Luc. Okay. I want you to try to work out how you would say I give the book to him. Okay, see if you can work that out. I'll give you 10 seconds to work that out. I think we've got a little uh, sound effect here. Here goes. Okay, so there uh, we uh, the, the sound effect didn't didn't work, but um, I think it worked at the end. So I'm seeing some examples posted in the comments. That's fantastic. Let's take a look at Mary's. Mary's saying "Je lui donne le livre." Uh, Jarvix is also saying "Je lui donne le livre." Okay, good, excellent. It is indeed "Je lui donne le livre." Okay. Let's see if we can change things a little, because we're going to use another example here. J'ai dit la vérité à mes parents. Now, what's different about this one? What's different about this one is the fact that our indirect object is now plural. Okay, so we've got à mes parents. So that is now going to mean I told the truth to my parents. To them, we're going to replace à mes parents with to them. Now let me check one little thing here. Yeah. So if we now do, uh, if we're going to replace à mes parents, we're going to use the word leur, L-E-U-R. And it's really important that you notice that there is no S on the end of that word when it's used as an indirect object pronoun. So we're going to put leur in front of the verb again. So it's coming in front of the auxiliary verb. And we get je leur ai dit la vérité. Je leur ai dit la vérité. So, we have now looked at how to say to him, to her, and to them, using lui for to him and to her, and leur for to them. Again, so far so good. Let me know in the comments with a one, two, or a three as to how this is sounding. We, we did it in English. It seemed to make sense in English. Does it also make sense in French? The fact that we replace to him or to her with lui and it comes before the verb and it to them also comes before the verb leur so uh, once again lots of threes coming in don't worry if you're not understanding this this might not be the right level for you don't worry about that at all um, it is the kind of level that we're working on in the master class and again i'll tell you a little more about the master class a bit later on but it seems that everyone is following things so far so what we're going to do is a listening activity and you're going to listen to an excerpt of one of the masterclass lessons and we're going to hear lots of examples of le, uh, sorry, lui and leur, the indirect object pronouns meaning to him, to her or to them. We're going to listen first and then we'll look at the text together and talk a little bit more about that text. And again, this is part of the masterclass, so you're going to be listening to me and Géraldine, uh, one of our masterclass tutors, and uh, we'll listen to the lesson, and you'll hear a little bit of an introduction where I ask Géraldine to give us some context for this uh, segment, and then we'll listen to the text. Now, you're, you're not going to see the text. We will listen again, and you'll see the text on screen. So this is just a case of listening for now. Uh, let's bring in the correct uh, things here. Um, 
I need to go back here and do this. There we go. Let's listen to our text. Alors, alors Géraldine, tu peux nous expliquer notre premier dialogue Oui, alors, dans ce premier dialogue, nous avons Norbert et Swazig. Norbert et Swazig Swazig. Swazig Qui est un prénom breton. Ah, un très joli prénom. Mm -hmm. Swazig. Ok. Et Swazig a envie de voyager autour du monde uh -huh. et elle en parle avec Norbert. Très bien. Alors, nous allons commencer notre première lecture maintenant. Alors, tu as parlé à tes parents de ton projet de voyage autour du monde l'année prochaine Oui, je leur ai parlé de mon projet, mais mon père pense que ce n'est pas une bonne idée. Attends, tu lui as dit que c'était une opportunité unique et une chance extraordinaire Oui, oui, je lui ai dit tout ça, mais ils trouvent tous les deux que c'est trop dangereux. De plus, je leur avais promis de finir mes études avant de partir voyager. Mais ce n'est pas dangereux du tout puis tu vas leur écrire souvent, tu leur enverras des cartes postales de tous les pays du monde. Ce sera génial Tu ne veux pas venir à la maison leur dire tout ça I just need to unmute myself there. Okay, so that was quite fast. A conversation between the two people speaking in French about uh, an idea that one of them has had for traveling around the world. What I'd like to know is how you found that. We've been using one, two, and three, so one is uh, you found it a little, a little difficult. I'll just come back to uh, that slide and we'll uh, hopefully, yep, there we go. So, so far so good. Was one, was it a little difficult? Two, some bits of it made sense, or three, you understood it all. Now, I'm expecting that there won't be quite so many threes this time because it was quite fast. So let me know what you think of the speed of that, of the delivery there, and if, if you've understood it all. Because we're, we're going to go back through it now and talk about the language used in that. You may well have spotted quite a number of uh, lui and leur in there, of course, and that is the point of this text. So I'm seeing lots of twos, a couple of ones. That's that's good. That's good because this is exactly what we're wanting at this stage. We've understood the, 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 the theory. It's now putting it into practice that is more of a challenge. So let's take a look together at the text. I think I've got it here. Yeah. So let's talk through this together. Uh, in fact, actually, you know what I'll do? I will let you read the text while you listen to the text one more time. Okay. Alors, tu as parlé à tes parents de ton projet de voyage autour du monde l'année prochaine Oui, je leur ai parlé de mon projet, mais mon père pense que ce n'est pas une bonne idée. Attends, tu lui as dit que c'était une opportunité unique et une chance extraordinaire Oui, oui, je lui ai dit tout ça, mais ils trouvent tous les deux que c'est trop dangereux. De plus, je leur avais promis de finir mes études avant de partir voyager. Mais ce n'est pas dangereux du tout. Puis tu vas leur écrire souvent. Tu leur enverras des cartes postales de tous les pays du monde. Ce sera génial. Tu ne veux pas venir à la maison leur dire tout ça Ok, so hopefully, this time, by reading the, the transcript, As you listened, it made a lot more sense. We'll go through it now together. So Norbert stars. Alors, tu as parlé à tes parents de ton projet de voyage autour du monde l'année prochaine. So have you spoken to your parents about your plan de voyage, of travel autour du monde, around the world, l'année prochaine, next year? And Swazig responds, Oui, je leur ai parlé de mon projet. So I to them have spoken about my project. Mais mon père pense que ce n'est pas une bonne idée, but my father thinks that it's not a good idea. And then Norbert continues, Attends, wait a minute, tu lui as dit, you to him have said, so there's our indirect object pronoun, lui, tu lui as dit que c'était une opportunité unique, did you tell him that it's a unique opportunity et une chance extraordinaire, and uh, an extraordinary opportunity. Uh, oui, oui, Swazik says, uh, je lui ai dit tout ça, I told him all of that. Mais ils trouvent tous les deux, but, I told, uh, but, but they both find, 
que c'est trop dangereux, that it's too dangerous. So, Swazik saying, yes, I told him all of that. Je lui ai dit tout ça, another indirect object pronoun. De plus, what's more, je leur avais promis de finir mes études. I, to them, had promised to finish my studies. We're talking about both parents now. Avant de partir voyager, before going off to travel. And Norbert replies and says, Mais ce n'est pas dangereux du tout. It's not dangerous at all. Puis tu vas leur écrire souvent. But you're going to write to them often. Tu leur enverras des cartes postales. You send them postcards de tous les pays du monde. From all the countries in the world. It will be great. Ce sera génial. So, two more examples of leur in there. Tu vas leur écrire souvent. You're going to write to them often. Tu leur enverras des cartes postales. You, to them, will send postcards. And Swazig's response to this is, tu ne veux pas venir à la maison leur dire tout ça? Do you not want to come to the house and tell them all of that? So there we have our text, hopefully, that all makes more sense. And we've seen these examples of lui and leur in there all the way through. Now, as I said, this, there we go. There, this is an example of some of the content from our masterclass. And I'm going to tell you a little more about our masterclass content uh, right now. Um, we do have some questions coming in. That's great. Please do ask more questions. Karen was saying that was slower too. Yes. Yeah, so the second time you heard it, you heard a slower version. And that's exactly what we do in the masterclass. Whenever we have a, a, a lesson where we've got a, an audio dialogue, then you'll hear the dialogue at normal speed, if you like. But you've also got the opportunity to listen to a slower version so that you can pick out the words more clearly and then practice your listening skills by listening to the fast version or the normal speed version again. Let me come back to our slides here because we've done our listening activity. Um, we just want to review indirect object pronouns uh, now. So the purpose of indirect object pronouns is to replace nouns in order to avoid repetition. So j'explique la situation à Clara. I explain the situation to Clara. Je lui explique la situation. I to her explain the situation. Très facile. And we've looked at two indirect object pronouns in this particular lesson. We've looked at lui, meaning to him, to her, or to it. It's a singular pronoun used for the third person. And we've also looked at leur, to them. And uh, this is regardless of gender. So leur, meaning to them, and lui, to him, to her, to it, for a singular, and leur, to them, for the plural. Now, there are other indirect object pronouns. You can say to me, to you, to uh, all of you, to us, and so on. But we'll cover them, obviously we'll cover them in the in the, the master class, but we'll cover them another time. Leur never changes when it's used as an indirect object pronoun. There is another word in French, L-E-U-R-S, but it means something different. It means there, as in, um, it's a, it's a, 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 what is it? It's a, uh, it's a possessive pronoun, <laughs> les leurs. Um, and uh, note that in French you often need to add a to. So in English we can say, I send him a letter, but we're really saying, I send to him a letter, or I to him send a letter in proper French word order. Je lui envoie une lettre. Voilà. Okay. Some verbs require an indirect object. So although we maybe not use that indirect object in uh, English, we do require that in French. So it's to send to someone, to say to someone, to explain to someone, to give to someone, to offer to someone, and so on. Okay. Right. Another question then. How have you found this? Does does this all make sense? Did you find it easier to understand when we went through it together? Um, did you Do you feel confident now in using lui and leur in this tricky part of, uh, of, of, of French grammar? And uh, do you feel that you'd be able to use that on your own now? Let me know in the comments. Again, uh, we uh, it's great to have some uh, some uh, some feedback and some some comments and questions, and I will answer all of these as we go through. Um, super clear so far. Thank you. Great to know. Uh, mostly three. Excellent. That's that's great. Brilliant. Okay, let's move on because I want to take this further with you and tell you a little about the Coffee Break French Masterclass. 
The Coffee Break French Masterclass is our flagship course. It's a six month course that runs from the, the next uh, cohort of the Masterclass begins next week uh, on the first, well, on the 2nd of October, Monday, the 2nd of October. And it runs for six months all the way through to March 2024 monthly modules so each module there's a different uh, sorry each month there's a different module i was going to say each module there's a different month um it's monthly modules of short regular sessions and uh, very much structured learning so the idea is that we're building on what you learn and when we cover something in one episode we build on it and learn more in the next episode there's audio content there's text content and video review content for each module of the masterclass too um, the whole purpose of this, the whole idea around this is that it is, of course, coffee break style learning. And we, we very much uh, promote the idea of coffee break learning, which for us means that it's friendly, it's comfortable, it's relaxed, but it's thorough and uh, you really learn a lot. So coffee break length, we're talking about uh, lessons that last perhaps 15 or 20 minutes where you can sit down with a cup of coffee or tea if you prefer and uh, learn something together with us. It's coffee break style because everything is done in a very friendly way. It's like going for a coffee with your friend who happens to be a French teacher. And it's also quality, co coffee break quality. We've been creating content for many, many years and uh, we pride ourselves in creating high quality materials uh, with excellent sound recordings, uh, high quality video and uh, high quality uh, printable resources too. So the curriculum for the masterclass is separated into these six modules. And the modules are as follows. So module one is on tricky verbs, where you'll be learning things like the difference between savoir and connaître, which sometimes can be quite straightforward. Savoir, to know a fact. Connaître, uh, to know a, a person or to be acquainted with someone. But there are tricky times when you, you're not sure about which to use. For example, which do you use when you're saying you know the words to a song? Hmm, intéressant. Um, we also cover things like omni and amni, two words that mean to bring or to take someone somewhere, to go somewhere with someone. Um, but again, there's very specific situations where you use one and not the other. So module one, which will be October, focusing on tricky verbs. Module two, uh, sorry, I got completely distracted there when I thought our, our Spanish master class <laughs> was supposed to be starting right now. Um, no, we've, we've, okay, we've got a few more minutes. Uh, module two is on uh, pronouns. So this is the content that we'll be looking at today with lui and leur, but we'll also be looking at all sorts of other pronouns uh, within that module. And I guess the thing about module uh, about pronouns is that they're little tricky words and it's sometimes difficult to know exactly where to use them and how to use them. Module three takes a little step back from grammar. We've tried to really plan the masterclass carefully. So we've had quite grammatical uh, content in modules one and two, uh, but with module three, we take a step back from grammar and we focus on vocabulary. We're looking, we're looking at false friends. And false friends are those words where you think you know what they mean, but they end up meaning something completely different um, because they look like an English word, but in actual fact, they mean something different. Um, but of course, in false friends module, we'll be seeing examples of the tricky verbs and examples of the pronouns that we've learned in module one and two so far. Module four is on tense mastery. So we'll be analysing lots of different tenses and really getting into them and helping you know which tense to use when. And module five is on the subjunctive. Now, this is a topic that some learners feel is a real challenge, but within this module, we'll help you understand that actually it's pretty straightforward. And once you learn some new patterns and once you learn the triggers, then the subjunctive is very easily mastered. And module six is a great module. I think this is possibly one of the most popular modules for lots of our learners. And this is where you are helping you sound more French and use more authentic French and, and sound more authentic when you speak and, and indeed uh, the, the words in the, that you use when you're writing. So those are the six modules of the masterclass. And again, those happen once a month over the, the course of the next six months. So, for example, Sound More French will be next March. March seems a long time away, but it'll be, it'll here, be here before we know it. Um, so the schedule of the, the masterclass is that we run basically, I'll, I'll, actually, I'll, let me see if I can show you this. Uh, I think I've got it uh, here. Yeah. So this is quite difficult to see, but this is basically a, a, a calendar of October. And you'll see here that the lessons 
typically go out on a Monday and a Wednesday. And that means you'll get access to the lesson on the Monday. You'll be able to do your homework, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. You'll do your homework on the Monday, and then the next lesson will be available for you on the Wednesday. But that doesn't mean you necessarily have to do the lesson on the Wednesday. You can do it on Thursday or Friday, or indeed on Saturday. You've got plenty of time before the next lesson comes on the 9th, and that will be your third lesson. Then we take a break because after the third lesson, we've got a little activity for you, putting into practice what you've done in lessons one, two, and three. And then we go back to another lesson for the third week in October, and that's lesson four on the 16th, and lesson five on the 19th, or the 18th there, I think it is. And then that's the end of the, the learning content, if you like, for the month, and we go back at that point to review. So we'll provide a checklist and a video review, and then at the end of the month, looking there around the 25th, we'll give you a test to see how much you've learned from the, the, the Masterclass module. Now, the test is self-access, it's self-corrected. Um, don't worry about that. It's not a, a big, scary test. It is just a, a way in which you can check what you've learned um, to see how much progress you've made. So the idea is that these five lessons, five main lessons, will give you enough to work through. If you can spend 15 to 20 minutes on the, the masterclass every day, then one day you can do the lesson, the next day you can do your homework and so on. It's very manageable to work through the, uh, the modules of the masterclass in this way. So that's the, the schedule of the masterclass. Now, the target audience, we very often get asked this question about the, the masterclass. Let me once again come out of here. And if I show you, this is um, our common European framework of reference uh, for language learning. And uh, it is where we go from A1 right up to, well, C1 and beyond. C2 would be a pretty much a native level. And uh, the courses that we have available within uh, Coffee Break start from A1 with Coffee Break Season 1 and then go right up to a C1 level with the likes of La Vérité éclat toujours, and Il était une fois, and so on. Now, the masterclass itself sits around here. It sits between the sort of lower intermediate and the upper intermediate level. So if you've been working on season two, for example, we would feel that season two would kind of complete a, a B1 level. And uh, as you work on to season three, you're moving towards B2. But by doing the masterclass in between the season two and three, that will help you build your understanding and expand it further. Equally, if you're working on season three already, then the masterclass, again, is very good as complement complementary uh, materials to help you move through season three. Season three is a story. You're following a story, whereas the masterclass is more grammar focused and organized around uh, the, the main areas that we've discussed there. So that is the, uh, the, this, the target audience. And let me just share this slide here, which is our features of the masterclass. So the masterclass, as I said, is six months with six modules. And there are five audio lessons every month. There's a course booklet, so you can work your way through the course booklet as you take each lesson. There are bonus resources, which we provide. So checklists, video reviews to help you consolidate your learning. And at crucially, every lesson you get a homework task. And this homework task will allow you to put into practice what you've been learning. So, for example, if we're looking at omni and amine, we might ask you to use both verbs in a sentence uh, and see what you can come up with. And we'll provide, uh, we, we'll provide support with that. And that, that as I said, the, the VIP support, your homework will be corrected and your questions answered by our expert masterclass tutors. So you will be getting that content. You'll be getting that feedback all the time. And also, you'll be seeing the feedback that we're posting on other people's uh, homework too. So it's very much a shared learning experience and you can benefit from the help that another learner is getting through the, uh, through the masterclass. So that is uh, a little bit about the, the features of the course. Um, what's our next? Oh, a very important one, pricing. So the cost of the masterclass 
Um, I think I've got the slide here. Yep. So for the five lessons per month, for the bonus activities, the module test, email check-ins and guaranteed feedback. And of course, at the end, you get a course certificate. The cost is $399. Now, the masterclass is only sold in dollars, but you will be able to buy it from anywhere in the world. Um, the price will automatically be converted to your local currency. And that includes any taxes where applicable. So there's no nothing added to that afterwards. Um, but that's the, the cost for the... Uh, for the, the whole masterclass, one payment of $399. Okay, questions. I know we've got a couple of questions already, so I'm very happy to answer these. Um, I hope that this has uh, been clear. Um, if you would like to, let me just come back here. If you would like to access uh, the masterclass, then you can go to coffeebreakfrenchmasterclass.com or search for Coffee Break French Masterclass. Just make sure it's the October 2023 uh, edition that you're signing up for. We have had other editions in the past, obviously. The content is the same as the previous uh, masterclasses. This is not a completely new set of content. Um, this is the same that thousands of students have already gone through, but it's the only course that we do at the moment that is a uh, uh, what's the word, a, a supported course, basically it's a guided learning course where you are guided through with the help of tutors who will answer your questions and uh, uh, will be able to correct your homework. Okay, let's take a look to see what we have. Um, Jarvis saying, your, your content is exceptionally good. Thank you, merci beaucoup. Um, let me scroll back to make sure I've got all of these questions here. So uh, we have a question here from uh, El Freer. So has the masterclass content been updated recently? I took it years ago and would be interested if this go around contains new content. So the content, as I explained there, the content of the masterclass is the same. It's had a little bit of a, a, a refresh visually, um, but it's the, the same uh, lesson content this time around as it was uh, previously. We are building new content all the time and we'll be making some announcements about that new content in a couple of weeks time, the 10th of October. Keep that date in your diary. Um, but for now, the, the master class content, this round of the masterclass, is the same as the previous uh, masterclasses. It's just a, a new group of learners that we're going to have in our masterclass. Uh, but we do hope you enjoyed the masterclass when you did it. Um, Colin is saying, my reading is good, but I struggle with listening comprehension. I didn't even recognise that Swazig was a name when I heard it. Yeah, Swazig is quite an unusual name. It's popular in Brittany, obviously. Um, but don't worry about that. I think with the masterclass, Colin, you, you would definitely find uh, the practising of the listening really helps because we, we never just say, here's an audio, here's a dialogue, listen to that, and, and you know, we leave you to it. What we've done today, all of the, the chat that I've done with you and going through the, the dialogue, that's in the lessons. So we only heard little excerpts of the lessons and the, the explanations of everything, the discussion around everything, all of that comes within the masterclass lessons. And of course, you get the, the course booklet to help you uh, with all of that. Um, let me just tell you, I'm, I'm loving all these threes in the comments. <laughs> so that's always good to know. Um, Right, so Karen is asking, are there speaking exercises and feedback on pronunciation? So one of the limitations of the system that we use at the moment for the masterclass is that there's not the opportunity for you to upload uh, your, uh, for example, a, a speaking exercise or your speaking and for us to provide feedback. However, we understand that that is changing and we hope that by the time we get to the final module, the uh, Sound More French module, where there is definitely a focus on uh, pronunciation and so on, there will be a, a way and a system in place where we'll be able to provide feedback on your spoken French, not just your, uh, your written French. We're very much hoping that that will be the case. And if it's not part of the platform, then we'll make it work in another way. Um, so that is hopefully happening uh, within the platform, but we'll definitely be using it uh, in some way for speaking practice in, in that sense, not uh, like simultaneous speaking practice. Um, but for now, this is a focus on, on uh, giving you feedback on the, the work that you're either writing or hopefully down the line speaking to. Okay, 
I hope that answers your question, Karen. Um, and if you have uh, other questions, don't hesitate to, to post them. Um, if you would like to know more about the Masterclass, then you can, of course, uh, go to our web page there, Coffee Break French Masterclass. There's even a, a, a sort of sample pack that you can download with uh, some exercises in it, and it gives you a feeling of uh, the kind of content that we cover in the Masterclass. Um, you can find out more there or get in touch simply by emailing team at coffeebreaklanguages.com. Um, Tracy Ann is saying, currently working through the free version of season three. It's been a bit of a challenge. Would I be better to do the masterclass or paid season three? Right, that's a, a, a good question. Um, what I would suggest there is with season three, obviously the kind of content in season three is a story and with any story you come up against the words of the story that may not necessarily be the perfect order in which to learn a particular tense or a particular part of grammar because we address things as we come across them and that ultimately is what real life is all about. But the masterclass certainly would give you a thorough grounding in a lot of the aspects that come up in season three and I think that you would probably feel more comfortable tackling season three having done the masterclass but it is similar in level um, if you've done season two uh, and you've already worked through all of that then and, and are really confident with that then I would definitely say that the masterclass level will be will be good for you um, likewise if this is not quite the right time for the the masterclass or indeed for season three you might want to consider our coffee break club where we provide access to lots of practice videos to help you build that level at your intermediate uh, at your intermediate level so I hopefully hopefully that explains enough for you Tracy uh, sorry Tracy Ann um, James is saying perhaps in reply to, to Tracy Ann I'm taking the masterclass and it's not too difficult and learn lots James that's what we like to hear great 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 stuff um, we have got a class of the masterclass currently running there was a class that started in uh, uh, June so um, there is a group of students already working through uh, the masterclass and James we're delighted to hear um, that uh, you have uh, found that useful um, Oral is saying, um, I've missed this session on Koi. Sorry, I, oh, uh, oh, right, okay, yeah. So, the the indirect object, um, yeah, you, you have missed the, the, the discussion on that, but you can watch this back. Um, so, I hope, hopefully that, that helps. Um, Jarvis saying, season three paid version was incredible and super useful. Great to hear. Um, so again, if you're working on season two, if you've only just started season two, or if you're working through season two, the masterclass is not right for you yet. Um, there are other things that you can do, and there will be other things in the future that you can work on as well as season two. But if you've completed season two and you're comfortable with all of that, and you're ready for a challenge, then the masterclass might be the right level. Likewise, if you're working through season three and finding that the right level for you, then the masterclass uh, is also good. And I always say it's good to be working at things that are just a little bit too hard for you. If it's too hard, way too hard, then it, it defeats the purpose. But if something's just a little bit too hard, then that's a, that's a good level to be at. As I said, if you have more questions, get in touch. We would love to hear from you. But for now, thank you very much. I'm going to leave you there. Merci beaucoup et à la prochaine.